Hey everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Black Series action figure review. We've got HK87 finally picking this one up, um, which is, I'm really glad to have this one in the collection again, uh, particularly with their appearance uh, due to be seen in Ahsoka, which is a mere three weeks away. I'm really, really excited about that. It's uh, it's going to get here very, very quick. Of course, these showed up in the, the first time we saw Ahsoka in live action in The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode Five, the Jedi. So yeah, HK87. Uh, these are part of Thrawn, Thrawn's armada, um, and all a part of his sort of regime. Given that they have the uh, the symbol of Thrawn's fleet on them, I'm not sure whether they've put it on the figure. Um, we're about to find out. But uh, yeah, this is a nice looking figure. Definitely enough to get a second one. Worthy, worthy of a second, I think. Um, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna bust this one open and and take a good look. Let me just try to tape nice and quick. So there we have in the cardboard. Just gonna rip those parts nice and quick. Put the figure aside. We'll get that out. We'll get all that out of the way. Get the box out of the way. It's number 29 for the Mandalorian. So yeah, this should just be the blaster in here. Hope you can hear me over the rattling of the package. <laughs> so yeah, there's, there's the blaster. And that looks nice. Slightly different to what we've seen, which is cool. I like that. And the figure. All right, first impressions. Let's take a look at this guy. Nice, looks good. I like the colors. I like the sort of half, half sort of, I thought it was a cape, but it's a, it's a sleeved, it's a sleeved half robe, which is which is cool. I like that a lot. That's good. I'm just checking out the legs. They're very reminiscent in some ways of the HK-47 Hunter Killer droid from Knights of the Old Republic. So I dare say that one, maybe one that comes in the future. This is being HK87. This is a this sort of designed him to be a slight upgrade of that droid, or very much an upgrade of that droid. I just want to sort of roll up the sleeve and sort of see what color arms we get up there if we can. Looks to be the same on both sides. But that's that's damn cool. So I really like the uh, the helmet on this guy, the sort of head and helmet. Now that's a, a sort of a softer plastic on the on the top of the head there. But yeah, I really like it. It's sort of ropes and stuff that are wrapped around. Interesting as to why a droid would need a sort of half robe, <laughs> but. It's all aesthetic, it, all, it looks cool. Well, that's, I'm not gonna complain about it, I think it looks great. But yeah, definitely a lot of the um, sort of Japanese samurai sort of feel from that episode, of course, directed by Dave Filoni. He's uh, greatly influenced by things like Akira Kurosawa and all the classic Japanese samurai films. So he definitely went for that aesthetic in that episode. So the hands are nice and tight. That's good. They're not very. They're not a super soft plastic, which is good sometimes because it means the blasters aren't going to fall out. So that's, that's good. The sort of ropes and stuff seem to be pegged into the top of the shoulder there. Kind of hard to see, but. Can sort of see a peg under there. There you go. So it's pegged into the top there. 
And uh, yeah, the fabric's very similar to um, the way that the fabrics they've used on the, like on the Karmas of some of the clone troopers. With that sort of red stripe painted down the front there, and down the back. That's cool. I like that. So effectively, um, you know, I, I, if I were to get a second one, I'd effectively just swap that over. It seems to be the same on both sides. There's no sort of clear front and back to the, the fabric. So just to di differentiate your two troopers, um, yeah, you could definitely swap swap sides, flip it over. Um, you might have to keep the keep that sort of sash thing on the one side, um, which means yeah, you either punch a hole through the fabric or I don't know, I don't know. I'll um, I'll see what happens when I when I pick that one up myself. I'd definitely get get a second one. It looks to have pretty solid articulation, nice soft sort of shoulder pauldron pieces there to sort of move up. Got that nice butterfly joint in there. It appears to be a butterfly joint. Good movement there. The upper torso. And that's for a good range. Hinges at the hips. Of course that sort of piece of armor there sort of affects that but that's fine you get a hinge at the knees and a swivel there as well and then yeah hinge and a swivel on the ankles and then the wrists seem to be just in and out on that hand and up and down on that one. So a little bit different on each hand. But yeah, the details are nice. I like it. I'm glad I finally picked this one up. It's been sort of hanging around for a little bit. So sort of just keeping my eyes open, making sure they're not disappearing. Um, but yeah, definitely wanted to get a hold of them before they show up in Ahsoka. Um, because we've seen them in the trailer, and um, yeah, they might they might be a little bit of a hotter potter ticket item once once that shows out, and once these guys are uh, a little bit more prominent potentially. I love that little detail of the silver on the on the knee joint there, both those sort of pins. That's really cool. Really nice figure. HK87. Very nice. Very, very nice indeed. There's a... Uh, trying to decide, determine whether there's a bit of a joint in the neck. It doesn't appear to be. No joint in there, but at the top of the head. That's for a pretty moderate range of movement, so that's pretty good. So I'm, yeah, very happy with HK87. Definitely be growing a second one of these at some point, real soon, hopefully. Yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Drop a drop a comment down below, let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, we'll see you for some more reviews coming up real soon. Until then, may the force be with you, always.